Hi, I'm Ricky Frank. I've been enameling for 37 years. I make enamel jewelry and I'm also a teacher. What I'm going to do right now is take a piece that I've made in an earlier project and add some color to it. What I've done is I've taken a piece of roller printed copper, I've fired a layer of clear enamel over it so that we can see this beautiful pattern coming out underneath it, and then I've taken some transparent orange, some transparent yellow, and sifted them over that piece. I've also counter enameled the piece which is putting enamel on the back of the piece to give some stability so the front doesn't crack off from the stress created by glass being melted onto metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a very, very simple stenciling technique. And since I have jars of enamel, I've got little round lids, I can use these as a stencil. So the way I'm gonna start is I'm going to take my lid and decide what part I want to block off. So the part that gets blocked off is going to remain the same, and wherever it's not blocked off will be where the enamel's added. So I will put the piece here, go ahead and block off the area that I want. So everything under here, which is mainly the oranges, is going to stay orange. And now what I've got is some transparent green, it's called grass green 2350 unleaded enamel. And I've already taken the fine particles out because we want to get the fine particles away from our piece because they create air bubbles around them and the, and the enamel is not as clear. So I'm going to put my dust mask on. Whenever I sift, I use a dust mask. Get my stencil right where I want it. Sift some enamel. And now I've got a bit of, I've got a nice sharp line. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more enamel to the edge here and just stay away so um, I don't get it into the orange. And I can add just a little bit there. And we can fire this now. So again, because I have enamel on the back, I can't put it on the screen or it would melt and stick on to the screen. So I use something called a trivet. I balance it carefully. And I'm going to put on my glasses to keep from getting infrared light into my eyes and causing cataracts. I'm going to use my firing glove so I don't burn my hand. And I'm going to use my trowel to carefully pick the piece up. Put it in the kiln. Now this kiln is programmed to hold at a certain temperature. I think I've programmed this one for 1520, and what we can see is the temperature's already dropped down 1440. So it's dropping down approximately 100 degrees whenever I open that door. So I'm not concerned with how quickly the temperature's getting up to on the kiln or, or waiting to worry about when it reaches a certain temperature. What I'm doing is taking a look inside the kiln to see when the enamel's starting to melt, because that's the important thing. It doesn't matter what the temperature says it matters what the enamel's doing. So it usually takes a minute to two minutes. This is a fairly thin piece and it doesn't have a lot of enamel, so it shouldn't take very long. So I'm gonna pull it out right now and just take a look and see where it's at. So what we've got here is, it's actually melted already. So I've got this beautiful green covering up that yellow that was there before. And I've also got some green over the orange, which I didn't really know whether I'd like or not. So as it cools, we'll be able to see that. And I always make a point of not doing too much when things are hot. I don't believe in multitasking with hot because usually nothing good comes of it. So I'm gonna lift that up, let this cool on here for a moment. And then I can see how the green has changed the color there. And I've got a nice, very subtle, because this is transparent enamel. So optically, we're kind of reading these colors together, but we can still see that line. And over here, we can see the greens over the orange, the greens over the yellow, and the clear. Now, at this point, I could let it cool and then do more, or I could leave it as it is. I've got a piece of copper with roller printed texture on it transparent enamels to begin with to give it some color. And then I used a very simple stencil. Now I could have used paper, I could have used cloth with a pattern in it to let the enamel go through. Anything to create a pattern 
or a line or a shape, sifted my enamel around the outside of the stencil and fired it. And that's what we've got now. So I'm Ricky Frank. If you have any questions, go to riograndecom or call Rio for support. Thanks so much for watching.